All right, here we have in Steelers Central with the 122nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Benny Snell. Snell. Benny Snell, running Benny back. Snell. Where is he from? Kentucky. 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 Uh, this is our World War II veteran, Mr. Charles Sterling Wiggins. Thank you for your pick. And again, that's Benny Snell, running back from the University of Kentucky. I loved watching this kid play football, and I'm not going to lie. I loved it. So a big, powerful runner, Rich, who oh. did not time very well, but was ultra productive and reliable. Huh. Sounds a little bit like a guy named James Conner yeah. when he was coming out of college. Yeah, my... Certain teams have their type, and this fits right with what they want to do. He's going to get you those tough yards in the bowl game. He finished the game. You talk about a four-minute offense. He was the four-minute offense. He wrapped it. Just yeah. closed out the game. And, and, Rich, I think that you have an affinity for this kid for another reason as well. You're Why a Jets fan, aren't you? Oh, sure. the, name, the name Snell comes to mind. It doesn't does. It? I just love that. The, that would be his grandfather, Matt isn't Snell. That's amazing. I love the football family stuff you do here, Charles. I mean, I, again, just he and, looks and, like a Pittsburgh Steeler when and, you think of a Steeler running back. And right? that looked and like his hype. And that looked type. like his grandfather running the football. Watch this. Watch this now. Okay? He's not going to run away from a bunch of people, but contact is his watchword. And when he does get a gap, look at him looking, and I'll finish you off. Right there. That's how. That's how he put, would finish people off. Drop that forearm. Remember him at Ohio State. Drop that forearm. Just bam, right through people. That's Benny Snell as well. How's everybody doing? Um, you know, pick Benny Snell. Really excited about Benny. Um, very evident when you sit down with this young man on how much he has passion for the game, um, how much he loves it, how much he be he likes being around it. Um, we were very interested in finding somebody who. Um, had a passion and just loves football, and, and that's Benny Snell. Um, as soon as you turn on his tape and, and watch how he plays the game, he mirrors that same amount of passion. Plays physical, plays hard, quite honestly represents the Stiller brand as you watch him play as a football player. Um, I had an opportunity to work with him on his pro day. Um, very intense, very into it, it's very important to him. Um, saw the things we needed to see. Uh, that, that helps complement the current um, roster of running backs, and very excited to have him as part of our uh, running back family. Why do you see him? How do you see him fitting into that group that, uh, that you haven't had? In I mean, I think Benny provides a lot of depth. I mean, he's just a good football player, and when and you know, in my experience, when you've got a roster of good football players and and guys who come every day and put it put it to work, I mean, he's going to bring that to the equation. And when you have that type of passion and loves football, they're going, to be what, they're going to be willing to contribute in whatever capacity they can, um, not just in the running back room, but with uh, Danny Smith and special teams and things of that nature. So, uh, like I said, really excited about what he brings, and we add another great football player to the roster. You said that he's a power runner, and the, and the tape shows that, uh, but he also said that he needs to work on his pass catching. Did you work him out in that? In that yes, match? we did. And and, you know, that was a pleasant surprise because you see that going into his pro day, I had those same question marks and things I'd like to see. But what you do see him do on tape is play um, the Wildcat. And there's a lot to being a running back, a non-quarterback, catching a snap and then being able to um, still get your eyes on your reads as a runner. And he's able to do that. You know, that takes a lot of hand-eye coordination to do it. And then when we worked him out in the pro day, he caught every ball, caught it with his hands, was natural was able to get in and out of his breaks, run the routes the way we'd want him to, want him to run those routes. And um, it was good to see. I mean, he, he, he can do all those things. You're not doing your boy Jalen Samuels any favors here. Hey, everybody's got to come every day and go to work. And, and, and Jalen's part of that group as well. And you grew now is about 22 and a half years old, running backs. Would you like to have some, uh, you know, a veteran guy in that room? Or is that to me, quite honestly, the most exciting thing is the fact that they're 22 and a half. I, I didn't know that statistic, appreciate it, but that they're young because those guys every day sit right in that room um, and they just absorb everything you say. They're still ready to learn. They're still ready to get better. Um, and for me, um, that, that's ideal. And with a guy like Roosevelt Nix, who's in the room, he does provide that, that leadership, um, that, that old head kind of mentality to make sure the room is right. James Conner is mature beyond his years. I'm quickly finding out. 
um, that that doesn't really concern me at all. It's really a bonus and quite exciting, to be honest with you. And you said you wanted to find a passionate person in that spot. Why was that important to, to bring that to the, to the group? you got to love the game. As much time as we spend in this building, um, perfecting our craft and, and, and having that willingness to be the, the best player that can be, you got to love it. I mean, if you don't, um, you're not going to be able to maximize who you want to be. And, and, and good things happen to players like that. Um, and so that's important. I think that's important across the board, any position we're talking about. But um, and when you're putting a team together, but absolutely, I mean, that's a very important factor. And, and, and he's at the very top of, of, of guys who demonstrate that characteristic. The Steelers, more than a lot of teams in the NFL, have committed to having a singular feature back in recent years. As much as that's a product of the guys that have been there, do you see that kind of shifting as you move forward here? Um, not particularly. I mean, what we do our job and they do theirs. Those guys go out there, play football. We, as, as we develop, we see we want to get our best players on the field. We want to see how they plug in that regard um, and, and play it from there. If, if one guy has a strength um, that we can take advantage of, we're, we're going to do that. Um, I know that we have some really good players in that room, some guys I'm really excited about coaching, um, and they're going to push each other to get better. And at the end of the day, the Pittsburgh Steelers get better from that. We see, you know, uh, family members. I mean, people you've drafted have family members that have been in the league, if it's fathers, uncles, whatever. Can you notice that by just talking to them that they maybe have a different aura to them because they had relatives in this league and been produced? Um, I think, you know, you see that. You can notice that from time to time. I think it's probably that's more evident coming from the college ranks myself as a younger, when you, when you get those guys as younger players because they're maybe a little step ahead mentally of what some of the other kids coming out of the high school level would be. Um, in this case, you know, when you get to, to the level that these guys are at now, leaving college and coming into the uh, National Football League, those guys are already um, kind of all in the same plane in that regard on, on how they've developed and learned the game to put themselves in this um, situation. So by this time, it's, it's not quite as big a deal. Anyone else? You mentioned James Conner had showed maturity beyond his years. I'm curious some of the ways he quantified that. Well, we all know James' story, um, and I think that part that's part of the deal. But the way he, that he just leads, I mean, he's a leader. There's no doubt about it, and the guys know it. Um, the way he carries himself is a very professional manner, um, and he wants to do whatever he can to be the best player he can be. And from a coach, that's a coach's dream. I mean, that's what we all look for. Um, he's he's constantly looked to progressively get better, um, and, and the guys see that, they respect that, um, and, and in turn, it makes the whole room better. Are you a believer in running backs by committee? I believe, I'm a believer in getting our best players on the field. Um, sometimes that requires a guy to take more carries than not. Um, other times, um, you know, maybe there's guys that have certain skill sets that, that fit better. Um, to a particular play or scheme we're trying to run. We'll figure all those things out as we get into continue to build our, our, our team. Um, but, you know, I'm just a believer in getting the best players on the field. All right. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Just say Duval. All right. Here's the – that's right. Let's Duval. Let's get the Steelers' latest pick. All right. Make some noise. From the Pennsylvania Special Olympics, Greg McCullis and Michael Moneymaker and Pittsburgh Police Chief Scott Schubert. Here we go with pick number five. With the 141st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. Pittsburgh Steers to select. Zach Gentry, tight end, Michigan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. A lot of Wolverines going in this draft. Zach Gentry actually arrived as a heralded quarterback in Ann Arbor, ended up making the switch to tight end. He is enormous, he's over six foot eight, 265 pounds. Running down the seam, he's a big old target, but when he got, guys got into him, he struggled to play off those blocks. I was a little surprised he came out. I thought he would go back to school. It so shocked me when he came out early, very raw. He's gonna take a lot of time to develop, but obviously at that size and new to the position, there's room for growth. Uh, talking with you, we just want to talk about Zach Gentry. We just picked Zach. Uh, he's a good football player, uh, long frame, uh, convert. He, uh, he, so he, he, he went to Michigan as a quarterback, and he's converted to tight end. 
and he's had a couple of years of experience playing there. And he's a guy that we're excited about getting in here and getting to work with. So, questions? How often did you get to see him and meet with him in the process? Uh, they didn't see him. Didn't see him real often. Meet with him. Uh, uh, I saw him at the combine, and uh, he had his pro day up at Michigan. And I was up there for his pro day. We had dinner with him the night before when we went up there. So I spent a little bit of time with him. You have as much experience teaching a 6'8 guy how to stay low and block. Have you ever worked with anybody that big? Uh, Matt Spaeth was a pretty tall guy. So, you know, he, he's, he, he's a little taller than Matt. Uh, but uh, we've had some guys that, 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 that have had a good length. So. Coach, you, uh, how would you characterize him as a receiver, his hands, and as a blocker? Uh, he, he, you know, he, he's a quarterback. He was a quarterback, so I would say he's probably more adept at the receiving end of it. He's got some adjusting to do to become a good blocker, I think. But I think he, the kid is excited about it and willing. So, How do you see his having been a quarterback, uh, you know, well, the, all the guys that you've seen that have been quarterbacks have been have been able to to, to do things. You know, uh, we draft Heath Miller went to Virginia as a quarterback, and he he converted to a tight end, so should help him as far as reading coverages and doing things like that. So should be good for him. How do you see him fitting in with the guys that you already have in that room? Uh, I'm not sure, you know. We'll we'll see we'll see when we get him out there on the grass, you know. We got he got talent, so we'll see how he fits in once we get him in here. So coach you're comparing him to Heath Miller. They were both quarterbacks. <laughs> He's a little like Jesse though, kinda. Uh, <laughs> probably got probably somewhat. They both they were both they both long guys, so you know, you could say that too, yeah. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Joe. All right, all right. Thank you all, man.